Are you ready for part two of Brazen Impudence, a wonderful lecture by Neville Goddard. I've already read out part one and in that story he shares of course how manifestation works in general but also he shares his very personal story about how he manifested his specific person against all the obstacles that he had in his way, what to do, how to do this, how he did this. So if you are interested please do check out uh, part one of brazen impudence and this is going to be part two. Part two is again going to help and comfort a lot of you who are intrigued as to well what are we truly and if any of you are fearful of death or you have family members who are terminally ill at the moment perhaps you're struggling to manifest health for them perhaps you did try to manifest health but they still passed on. This is going to give you guys a bit of comfort, hopefully, and help you on your journey. Because I know it's happened to even a few of my clients, and it's like, why, why did this happen? I have personally myself uh, manifested uh, health and the survival of a friend of mine who was uh, struggling with cancer. But then there was another incident in which the another friend sort of still passed on. So this is going to give you guys comfort as well as keep you informed generally about manifestation, how this works, what we are, what to do. So stay tuned if you are interested. First up, I'm Athena Raven, for those of you who might not know already. <laughs> I'm a mental health and manifestation life coach, and I'm here to empower and inspire you on your manifestation journey. So please, please do like, subscribe, really help this channel to grow, help boost this wonderful algorithm that YouTube puts us through. <laughs> <laughs> and let's get the message out there to as many people who might need that extra comfort and support. I'm always here to support you guys. Please do share your experiences in the comments. You know, I always read them. I always try to get back to as many of you as I can. And if you'd like any one-to-one -one coaching as well, all my details in the description box below. So part two of Brazen Impudence, get yourself comfortable. Here we go. When I say you are all imagination, I mean it. While standing here on the platform, I can, in a split second, imagine I am standing on the outside looking at this building, or in another second, be in London and view the world from there. You say, that's all hallucination, that it's all in my imagination. All right, now let me share with you another experience. I was in New York City when I heard that my 17-year-old nephew my sister's oldest child, was in a terminal state of cancer. I knew how she felt and wondered what I could do to comfort her, to show her that the boy she loved was not flesh and blood, but spirit. So while in New York City, I went into my bedroom, closed the door and lay down on my bed. Knowing that my sister lived in the old family house in Barbados, I assumed I was on the bed where I knew Billy to be. I assumed my sister entered that room but could not see her son, only her brother, Neville. I lost myself in that assumption until my sister Daphne entered the room. Looking startled, she came forward, stared at me, then turned and left the room. When I was satisfied that I had seen her, and she had seen me and not her son. I broke the experience and returned to our living room to be with my wife and a friend who had come for cocktails. 10 days later, I received a letter from my sister in which she said, Nev, I just can't understand it. Giving the day and the hour, which coincided with mine in New York City, she said, I went into Billy's room and I was startled to see you there. I knew you were in New York City, yet I could not see Billy on the bed, only you. I must confess, I was a bit afraid. So I left the room and when I returned, I could see Billy again. So she could see Billy because by then I had departed. If I am all imagination, I must be where I am in imagination. When I gave the scene, sensory vividness with all the tones of reality I was seen by my sister 2,000 miles away no I didn't save Billy he died but my presence did convince my sister that her son was not flesh and blood if her brother in New York City could appear to her in Barbados 
she knew there was something that inhabits a body which cannot go to eternal death. I tell you, there is an immortal you that cannot die. That night, I gave my sister the conviction of a reality in her son that would survive when the doctor said he was gone. Gone where? Restored to a terrestrial world just like this as a young lad to continue a journey that was set up for him in the beginning, and that is to form the image of Jesus Christ in him. When that happens, Billy will awaken as Jesus Christ, the one being who is God the Father. <clears throat> Practice the art of movement. In New York City, my telephone was in the hallway and my chair in the living room. While sitting in my chair, I would assume I was at the telephone. Then I would assume I was looking into the living room. I practiced this exercise until I discovered I could move anywhere in a split second of time. Try it, and perhaps, like my sister, someone will have the strange experience of seeing you where you have not physically been. Make it fun. I do it all the time. A lady, thinking I was in Barbados where she last saw me painfully thin and weighing only 138 pounds, was hoping I was feeling better. When I instantly appeared in her living room, I was brown from the Barbados sun, wearing a grey suit, which I did not own when I left here but purchased in New York City. When I said, there is no time, and vanished. Well, she is accustomed to these things, so she was not afraid. I urge you not to limit yourself to a little body of flesh and blood, for you are spirit. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, so one day you must take it off. And he who takes it off is immortal. He is your own wonderful human imagination, who is God, the father of all life. When you learn to live this way, life becomes so exciting. Your days are full and you are never alone. I spend all day at home reading the Bible and meditating. I close my eyes and travel the world. It's fun and educational. It expands me and makes me become more aware of the infinite being that I really am. Now, the two stories from scripture that I have shared with you show the importance of persistence. When you pray, do not get down on your knees and pray to any unknown God. Instead, go to bed and dare to assume you are now who you want to be. Fall asleep, assuming it is true and you will be on the road to success. For this is how things are brought into being. Right now, imagine something lovely for another. They need never know who was the cause of their fortune, but you will. My first wife did not know I was the cause of her action. Had she thought that her act would mean my freedom and her disgrace, do you think she would have done it? She moved under compulsion and I was the compelling force. When you realize this, you forgive everyone for everything they have ever done because you may have been the one who was the cause of their action. Blake said, why stand we, are, we, he, we, hear, why stand we here trembling around, calling on God for help and not ourselves in whom God dwells? William Blake. Why call on any God when the only God dwells within you? He is not pretending, but actually became you. When you define yourself to the little garments you wear, you are confining God because it is he who is wearing it. You need no intermediary between you and yourself who is God. Don't run from this city to another in the hope of finding something better because the one person you are going to take with you is yourself. So... Resolve your problems here. Do not compromise. Decide exactly what you want and assume you have it. If your world would change, determine what it would look like. Then construct a scene which would imply you are there. If your mental construction comes close to your fulfilled desire, your little daydream will become a fact. And when it does, 
Will it matter what others think about your principle? Having proved itself in performance, share your experience with others that they may share theirs. Keep sharing this principle because in the end, we are all the one being who is the Lord Jesus Christ, one body, one Lord, one spirit, one God and father of all. Don't be ashamed to claim it. Man sees the Lord Jesus Christ as some little being on the outside, but he is in you. And when you see him, he will look just like you. <clears throat> A friend recently shared this sweet vision with me. She said, I saw a man in white, in a white robe, standing on a hill, building a canopy over the entrance to a temple. As I approached, I could see that the stripes used for the canopy were translucent green, and I remarked how radiantly beautiful they were. The man turned to look at me, and I realized it was you, Neville, and yet you were Michelangelo. You then address me saying, I have been working on this throughout eternity and it still remains invisible to others. Taking the stripes, I wove them into the form of a basket and you thanked me and said, great work. And I awoke. <clears throat> that was a beautiful dream. I have been telling the story of the resurrection throughout eternity, but it has never been put into living form. It still remains dead, like Michelangelo's Pieta or his David, made out of marble. Let David become alive in the minds of others. Give life to Pieta, the crucified one on the mother's lap. The story is public property, now a dead written code awaiting life in the imagination of men. Dramatize salvation's story, make it into a play or a television show and let Michelangelo's Pieta become alive. I have made the story alive because I have experienced it. Michelangelo, with his tremendous know-how of the human form, created the dead forms made of marble. I came along, unable to mould a stick, to find the dead forms taking on life in me. It is my hope that one day to this wonderful story will be told, as it really is, against the story that we have heard for over 2,000 years. Now let us go into the silence. And he always ends his lectures like that. Let us go into the silence and contemplate what has been taught here. So absolute power of the imagination. Talking a little bit, I suppose, about astral projection in a way as well. I wonder how many of you have experienced that. I admittedly um, have tried it out, but I've not projected to a point where someone has said, or maybe I have inadvertently, perhaps, because I've had that a few times where clients of mine have said to me, oh, you projected here and you're actually a lot shorter than I imagined you were and you're actually, and they listed things about me. Now, I don't remember, I didn't intentionally sit down doing it. <laughs> I'd have been dreaming. But um, it's interesting, isn't it, how we are all imagination. All imagination. So inversely, I was traveling and I do travel a lot in my dreams. Um, but in my mind, I am traveling too as I'm looking towards that end scene and convincing myself that I have that desire. Where am I? Who am I with? What am I feeling, touching, sensing around me, making it so real, giving it that sensory vis vividness? Is that what you're doing with your end scene? Are you subjecting yourself to it with that same degree of um, vividness? of reality, as Neville was doing um, to his sisters, he projected himself there. So real was his imagination that he actually transported as well. And that's how we need to feel with our imaginal act. Even if we're not transporting to it and people are seeing us, we are transporting ourselves there to a point in time, our future, but bringing it into the presence, transporting ourselves to that location or with that person or with, with the desire having those attributes of someone who would have that desire already, feeling, touching, tasting, sensing, speaking, you know, here, like every, every sense that you possibly can incorporate into that imaginal act to make it so real. This takes some practice. This takes some dedication and disciplining of the mind. It's not that easy to come by straight off. So like Neville says, have fun with it, play around with this. We are immortal spirits. For those of you who have lost close ones and or were trying to manifest health for them uh, health for them and couldn't or something that's just it's just sometimes out of our control and it's our time to leave this realm so we go into the next world whatever that might be and we are immortal beings so hopefully this gave uh, those of you that have gone through loss recently as well 
some comfort in that sense too. But I'm sending you guys tons and tons of love. Thank you again for joining me here and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.